Welcome to our next speaker, um, Olivier Mercier, and he is uh, Damien's colleague, so also an engineer at SAP. And he will uh, talk about new powerful ways to interact with technology. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Jack. It's a pleasure to, to be here and talk to you today. Um, so I do, uh, I do a focus on mobile application, uh, but there is also a lot of uh, side that is uh, research and development. So, and today I will focus a bit on uh, UX, um, UX and research, uh, some of the findings of the, that we had. Um, so, let's move on to the other side. So I was, uh, I studied with the idea that you know, most of the way we, we interact with the application is just by tapping on a screen, and it's kind of boring in a way. Uh, so I, uh, if you think about it, uh, like seventy percent of the time we interact with an application is just by tapping on, it. and then we, we also have some other way. Uh, the numbers are numbers I came up with. Uh, there, there is no scientific uh, meaning behind it. But, uh, <laughs> Trust <laughs> only the statistics you pay, not on the board. But we use this type of research. So I guess <laughs> some innovative ones are using like a, you know maybe a light sensor or an S10. But basically, this is very uh, this is a minority. Um, so I'm gonna maybe share some ideas with you, and hopefully that could, some of those ideas could be integrated in, in future products. Um, so how can we go beyond, how based on the phone or based on something simple, can we think of other ways to, to do things? So, um, so the first case is there could be a new device with a new sensor. So with this new sensor, obviously there would be uh, new things possible. For example, the Note 4 <coughs> has a heartbeat sensor. So you can imagine new scenarios with that. Um, then you can think of new combination of sensors. So your device already had GPS, it already, it already had gyroscope, but well, it could be a smart way to combine things. And, and a lot of things uh, recently with augmented reality is combining sensors. So we know where you are, we know where you look at, and based on this, you know, we can overlay things on top of the screen. So that's a completely new scenario. Um, then we have an innovative use of sensors. You don't combine sensors, you just use something in a new way. Um, and I think what Google came up with recently is uh, if you just have your phone in your, in your pocket, for example, using the accelerometer pattern, we can detect whether you're walking, you're cycling, or you're driving. So, um, also, there, there could be some new input or output or accessories for your phone. So, uh, I'm going to talk a bit more later about uh, FLIR, um, which is basically something that you plug into your, to your phone. So, it's an accessory that transforms, it transforms your phone into an infrared uh, camera. Um, and that will be on the next slide. Um, and then you can have a technology that now enables a new use of a sensor. So your sensor it was already used, it's known, but maybe your phone now is much faster and there is some faster processing you can do, for example, uh, image recognition on the device that was not possible before. So then if you could uh, open the FLIR application. Um, just before that, say, I wanted to mention we have all those new uh, opportunities. So we have new possibilities, but it's also a threat if you don't move, if you just let everybody do the cool stuff and we left behind. So very important to, to act and you know, we keep researching. So uh, I took an example of the FLIR device here, which, which is the infrared camera. Um, and basically, the kind of new scenario we can wow. think cool. is... So you can see it's running at yeah. 70 degrees Fahrenheit. He's <laughs> <laughs> got quite cold hands. So like if you compare it... My hand with this one. So big difference. Yeah. Maybe we can show that on the camera. And you're a smoker, you should have cold hands. Right. <laughs> Maybe you can put your hands next to mine and you can show. <laughs> can we see something? Yeah. Oh yeah, yours is way warmer. It's gonna explode. Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, this is a case where you can use the device for uh, kind of a, as a health assistant. So I can you can check blood circulation or you can you can check if somebody has fever, he would, he would have a more temperature, oh, especially in, the, in an airport that could be useful. Um, and then you can use that, uh, there was a new interesting way to use that. Um, some people use that as a game controller. I'm going to show you the demo here. So basically what they're using here is, you have the floor camera, and they're using the reflective property of the mirror here and the hands, so basically they detect the temperature of your hands. Based on this, they can detect the position of your hands, and then they can play a, a pong 
uh, pong game on the phone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they won the hackathon, their amount of you, and uh, they got $5,000. Nice. Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, another, another slide here. So it's the case where you don't use something uh, to, to control it. You are the controller. <laughs> so uh, you have the things that you probably know already, the Kinect, um, and also the, the leave motion. So the leap motion is a little uh, device similar to the FLIR that detects your, your, your hands. Uh, and basically, based on the image and the infrared, uh, it's able to reconstruct the, the, your, your skeleton, basically. Mm. And based on this, you, can, you have an API which gives you, um, you higher-level information, such as, is that a wrist? Is that moving right? Or, so you, you can have really impressive experience with that. Um, so that's one way. And the other way um, is to use the electricity going through your body. Um, and there is some really interesting things you can do. We have one device here, which is a brainwave sensor. So uh, you, you basically, you put it here. You attach this thing to your earlobe. And that creates a connectivity between your forehead and here. And this is a Bluetooth device. So using an SDK, you can get some uh, brainwave patterns. And you can use that to control an application. Um, and the meal, it's something that you put on your wrist. So it's something like this Bluetooth device as well. So you just put it on your on your arm like this, and when you move your hands, you uh, you basically generate some electrical pattern that we can detect, and you can have gestures as well. So well, I think one of the interesting things is you, most of the gesture sensor, you need to be exactly in front of it, and you need to, to make sure that your hands is detected. But when you wear this, you don't need to worry about it. Um, you can use it as a PowerPoint presentation controller, but it blows up my PowerPoint because it doesn't work on Mac, but, so don't do it. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, yeah, in theory, you can use that for PowerPoint presentations. Yeah, maybe you can. You also screen it when you use it. It's very uncomfortable, that one. So yeah, there's a, a demo one of our colleagues from our team in Singapore has done um, when it blows, and it basically it's able to, to control uh, visual enterprise. So I'm sure you guys would be interested. So here, basically, we detect you know the rotation on your wrist, and it's you are able to control the rotation here, and there is also the modes to go to the next step, and previous step, and things like that. Oh, and yeah, there was the brainwave sensor as well, but I can show you that later, I guess. So I wanted to show here as well that the app is not limited to just your device. Uh, and there is really interesting things, things you can do. If you have a video projector, you can, you can have an entire wall as, as your screen. Uh, and also, you can have everything as input as well. It's not only display. Uh, so using a Kinect, for example, you could detect where you touched on the wall or things like that. Uh, there is an interesting demo. Uh, it's a, a great example of how to use a sensor in a completely new way. Um, and somebody, uh, some somebody actually managed to use the input from the magnetometer and pick that up from the phone and basically you turn a surface into a touch, one well, interactive surface, basically. Sorry, how does it do that? So the magnetometer sensor of your phone, it detects you know, the, the changes in the electromagnetic field. So usually you, we use that for, for things such as you know, GPS positioning and things like that. But he basically got the raw data from the sensor and was able to, to pick up the position. So that the, piece of metal was a magnet? Yeah, it's a magnet. And based on the distance from the device? Yeah, so basically the, what the value picked up from the sensor is different depending on where the magnet is. Uh, and it also detects in three uh, dimensions, so you can even lift it up. And <laughs> I tried to reproduce it, and uh, in order to do it, you have to build up a kind of a configuration. So you have to say, okay, this is where I am, this is where I am, this is where I am. Basically. and then between that, you can strap that. So it's I low like of meter. So I wanted to talk about, uh, about 3D scanning. Uh, it's something that a lot of new device and technology came up in uh, last year. 
um, and uh, we have we have some of uh, we made some some work with it. Maybe you can you can show that. Um, so we have also a device called Project Tango here, um, and basically you can walk around the room and it's able to to map your position. Um, it's pretty impressive. So I will show you a demo of this. And basically, as you walk around, we can detect there is a depth sensor, so it detects the position of the of the points nearby, the points of interest. So if you are looking at this corner, it could detect the wall, the chair, and if I as I get closer to the chair, we can detect the changes in the position. And it's able to construct uh, basically a, a position in time of where you are. And I was trying this in the building uh, too the other day. I went actually I went down the stairs, I went outside the building, I came back up through another way. And my position was only one meter off, which is pretty impressive for, for the thing. I mean, we've never seen that before. And uh, I'm sure you guys will, will love this stuff. <laughs> it's uh, something that I, I found recently. Um, some researcher made uh, kind of an interactive 3D uh, touch area in a way. Uh, so they build up. From, from basic things, they were able to, to have a, the control of the 3D terrain. So I'm just going to play the video and you will understand what it means. Yeah, I'm probably right to that. So this is, this is called Obeki. Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, right there, right there. Are you talking about 6th sense? This is not 6th sense. No, this is 10th. But this is an instrument that has an overlaying visual. It's a silicone gel, and it's able also to, to keep the position where you left the, the silicone area. So you can pull things and it will stay in the position where you left it. So I guess a great case was uh, they, they picked up 3D terrain because it, it really makes sense to have uh, control of mountains and, and extend river, and I think you will, you will see that right now. Um, and also some interesting things that we have a lot of device to, to talk about this is augmented reality and, and virtual reality. Um, so augmented reality is basically you, you, you take your, you know, one example is you take what you see and you just add some relevant information on top of it. And virtual reality is, virtual reality would be a, this little example where you, you replace entirely what you see. And the, the Gear VR device here is perfect for this use case. Um, basically, you, you put your phone inside, and uh, that creates a 3D view. And we leveraging the, the sensor of the device, we can, we, as you look around, you, you, you see the updated view on the screen. So I will show you two examples of augmented reality. So this is for an education application, and basically the, the children can combine different atoms and electrons, and it creates the, this new particle, and then they can basically see it in 3D. <laughs> and then cool. there is this other one where you can see the, the skeleton of somebody. And it's in this other example, they combine a lot of technologies. <laughs> So you have uh, the leap motion here attached to the gear VR. So the leap motion detects your hand's position, and the gear VR you use that to have the virtual reality. Uh, in this case, it's actually augmented reality because they use the camera field as well. Um, and basically, this person is able to control something using her hands. And the, the interesting thing is, during the last few years, especially last year, those things would have cost so much money. It would have, I mean. It's hard to, it would have been hard to make a little prototype. 
but now you have all those new possibilities available. And another example of accessories. So basically, uh, <laughs> Google came with this uh, cardboard uh, pattern, so you can just fold the cardboard, and you, you can have a very cheap augmented reality device. Uh, so that's, that's, that's a very interesting example. Um, and yeah, some, some thoughts for the, for the future. So as you can see, we're going from mainframes to smartwatch. <laughs> so the world is getting smaller. Um, and uh, UI and UX <laughs> is getting better. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if you wonder, this is uh, Windows 95 on the smartwatch. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have any questions. Great. Thank you. Are you located here? Sorry? And are you located in Palo Alto? Uh, yes, we're uh, Damien and myself. We are in building two. Oh, okay. So my question is to both of you guys. When can we plot the common play with the toys? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just uh, in the networking session. <laughs> sure. uh, you can try the project tango and work around and see how it builds the map real time. What kind of investments is SAP making in these areas? Like serious investments, if any. So we we partner. We have a lot more partnership than actual. Uh, I guess a good way would have been to buy the IP and extend from this. And I think we we have some partnership more than actual internal building of the IP. But the IP we have is on using those those tools more than having. Like for example, Microsoft is investing a lot in hardware, so they create the Google is investing in the hardware as well. So they, they made the tablet. Uh, you have a very interesting new device coming from Microsoft. Uh, I'm not sure that's the, the route from SAP as we are a more software-oriented company. So we focus on using what the hardware gives us at the moment. But I, I guess some, some of the teams could have some other approach. Any other questions? Do you guys collaborate with, uh, I don't know if it's still the same, but there was a challenge project Doing yes. similar stuff on the. Okay. Um, I'm not familiar with the. What do they call it? They call it the. Disha? Disha. 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 Since we arrived here uh, two months ago, three months ago, we, we started to get in contact more with them and we will help them out in the next few months for a hackathon and things like that. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Thank you.